Okay, so I figured at the time of this recording, I'm about, let's say, about halfway through penance. I try to, again, I try to read three or four different things in like clumps at a time every Sunday that I'm having fun. And then, of course, I try to at least release like one of these videos per week and then with it like maybe two or three on other little things that are going on but yeah okay the reason why this thing with why pennants caught my eye rather than say here I uh, gotta pause this again because I gotta do a compare and contrast just slightly oh uh, yes this uh the authority wars banished by T.H. Solomon well Miss Paula actually doesn't open with like the flashback of kind of like woe is me you know for the the character she just puts a little scenario where it showcases the character's powers fairly quickly it'll show it showcases what she's running from uh the the one little quick flash she you have of of her mother is done in a couple of lines because you know and you know initially you're not super invested in a character you're just trying to figure out what this character is and this other book this banished book opens with you know this main character losing her parents and this farm and this kind of like more hidden area she was in but it's done in such a way where it meanders for pages and pages it's just like get to the point which I've noticed those that are more you know Miss Paula understands pulp kind of sensibilities in terms of make sure you have your words count make sure those words build up on whatever you're going towards and make sure it doesn't take forever to get whatever to whichever point you need to do in the chapter uh, it showcases Pe Pettis showcases a kid that's frustrated and somebody who is on the cusp of adulthood but isn't quite there yet which <sighs> Yeah, a lot of a young adult stuff really isn't aimed at people that are, in, you know, between 10 and, say, 16 anymore. It really isn't. It's aimed for, mm, I would say, 30-plus-year-olds trying to relive their glory years. Like, it, it's just my opinion, but that's just how it is. Because to, just to take it as an example, you can even see it in the sample here, because, uh, you know... I do get stuff from Silver Empire, but I also get around to getting the Kindle edition as a way to also tip them that way. You know, so I pay for two different book plans, <laughs> plus I tip them on via the Kindle every once in a while. So, you know, why not? Besides, I mainly do that because Amazon has this, the darn verified tag. Even if you buy from a third-party seller from Amazon, it'll still give you the verified tag. So the other kind of uh, stuff that I get there, sometimes the Ultraman DVDs, it'll still show that. But to get back on point with the book, um, when it's opening up, yeah, you get a quick glimpse of the world. So that way, say like you haven't read anything else with Heroes Unleashed, you can easily start with this. Because the way things are listed, you're like, oh, okay, Primes are obviously super-powered people. Um... Again, I think Heroes Unleashed does take some aesthetics from, you know, the old-time DC stuff and take some aesthetics from the old-time Marvel stuff because it does have aspirational heroes in it. It does have street-level people in it. But to me, it's vital to have the aspirational to help the cathartic motivational heroes, you know, bounce off each other. Like, that forces them to be better than what they are or to change and become better I mean, it, it's just a personal thing of mine, but I do appreciate the fact that Silver Empire does go out of its way to build a superhero universe that will cater to those that, say, love their Spider-Mans versus to those that enjoy the more Batman-type setup, or even those like me who mu very much prefer the more aspirational setup of Superman. Again, this thing, this whole setting has something for everybody, and it, it, this really is a young adult superhero novel. Uh, she manages to make Penance... Um, uh, how, how to put this? Uh, not 
kind of like overbearing, annoying, where it's like, oh, the adults know nothing, you know, that kind of thing, where a lot of adult, uh, young adult fiction will be like, oh yes, teenage protagonist knows everything. The All the adults have taken the idiot ball and are running around with it. You know, th this doesn't do that. It, um, again, a, with a lot of with writing, it's all about balance. Like, if you can you have to try to maintain the momentum and then with your own kind of writing style keep the reader invested but as I was saying earlier there's this like quick little flashback uh, with uh, her mother and it's very it's it's only it's only a couple of lines let me, let me see it's like maybe 20 lines of that but very quick and to the point sentences because she wants you to key on in on certain things with this dream slash flashback where this other book again I'm going to pause it so I can look at the the uh, little comparison here professional editing techniques yes here for example Pe Penance is just going quickly through this catches your, your eye the silver cross spun in the darkness very quick and to the point green eyes trying to hide fear coaxing her out of the darkness mama's smile a little tight her hand outstretched the pounding grew louder. Little Penny let Mama take her from her hiding place in the, the cabinet. Mama ran with Penny, threw aside the chair blocking the door, and fought with the locks. Penny dashed back to the cabinet to hide from the man. You know, step scruff, step scruff. You know, you're getting really quick and to the point. And you, you get the, uh, the sense that this is coming from, like, the mind of somebody who's even younger than what she is now. You know, little kids will focus on very different things than say a teenager or adult would so this flashback I think is a lot more effective than what this other person put as this other guy opens his prologue origins with Clara read her book as she always did alone and under the anxious watch of her parents she sat atop the hill in the deep grass next to her family's farmhouse her one hand held to a cap to her head to secure it against the strong wind while the other kept the thick pages of the worn leather-bound book at bay. As thoughts of the cosmic battles filled Clara's world, she lowered her hand from the cap. When she did so, a gust of wind took a hold of it and flung the cap down the hill in front of her. Her brilliant red locks were released to fly in the wind, and she bolted in her f to her feet. The book fell to the grass, its pages fluttering in the air, and she tore off the cap. It tumbled and spun on the grass as she scrambled down after it. By the time Clara finally captured it with a demonstrative stomp, she found herself among the trees of the their small orchard at the bottom of the hill see th th then this to me is like meandering and taking too long the beginnings of their neighborhood crops rose from the thick soil beyond the rustling leaves and the dangling swollen fruit of the orchard the crowded field held seemingly infinite rows of tall green stalks that Clara knew somewhere out there the neighbors were starting their harvest as well Clara the voice came from the top of the hill made her spin around Clara what are you doing sorry mommy my cap blew off I chased after it it because this this other book is trying to set up this whole flashback of you know before this farm gets invaded by the bad guys and everything else, but it like I've said in in other writing things where I want you guys to get to the point. Uh, that is just me personally. What can be said th this guy's whole paragraph set up and opening. It should have opened up with the bad guys coming to the farm, or it should have opened up with the protagonist much older, and then it flashes back to a little quick memory. Which, again, this is what Penance gets demonstratively correct. You you get a, you get a bit of a setup of her in the store, you know, grabbing a few things, you know, shoplifting basically. But it quickly establishes that Penance is in a world that superheroes exist, supervillains exist, people caught in between exist, uh, the everyday person or citizen is in there, and you know it mixes that all in really effectively in the first chapter, and it showcases that Penance might have a little bit of a temper, but it, it's not like overbearing. It's not like she's going to Hulk smash or something. But it gives the sense that her powers are still growing, and um, th that's going to be something that she'll have to fight with a bit. But as an example, it, it, it's just, it goes wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Every issue in Penance gets to where it needs to go, and it makes the reader want to keep turning pages. You know, at least this reader, anyway. 
So, so sometimes when you are trying to balance to, to bring stuff out in the open, depending on your wheelhouse and everything, when it comes to superhero pros, I expect it to be more like the old pulps where it's just like, wham, 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 you know, like, and then in a, in a, like a sea of action, you'll have little quiet moments where the characters can breathe. Like, that I can understand. But a lot of different books won't really take that route, which is the reason why I try to focus on this channel with things that will get to the point. I think penance is important in the fact that, yes, you do need characters that can bring in a younger audience to grow things, but they have to be characters that actually can feasibly um, capture that younger audience. When, when I was younger and reading stuff even in middle school a lot of the books I would gravitate towards was stuff like Narnia and the boxcart children because it was simple to get into the story flowed fairly quickly and the um, the children characters or even the, the the maybe up to like 13 or 14 year olds would be taking action but also the adults weren't like stupid idiots that you ignore you know a lot again a lot of YA stuff has the, the adults especially if you're past say 20 they all have the idiot ball and it's just like oh god mm. and again I apologize if this beca became a little bit of more of like a reading preferences but it's just the whole entire Heroes Unleashed series will cater to different kinds of readers and certain stuff will overlap and I definitely appreciate the fact that you know Silver Empire takes the time to uh, find writers that can appeal to different audiences and different types of readers in terms of like personal taste do you want a slower build up or do you want wham bam thank you ma'am you know like get to the point like I've always said and, and another thing I do appreciate is like the beginning of each chapter it it's just a personal preference, but I do like the fact that, you know, it lists like, oh, this is planet Earth. This is this particular city here or this particular planet here because it automatically sets up like, ah, this thing is going out wider. It has a cosmic kind of angle, which I definitely enjoy. So <laughs> automatically right there, you don't even have to say much to establish a, a chapter. Um, I've noticed like some older pulps have done this and even the Aeon 14 series which I've re I read a bit like each chapter it opens up with like say uh, USS you know ship here and then it'll show the date and then kind of like maybe the location that so that way it's like automatically setting in my mind like okay this is some somewhere else that I'm not even familiar with but it's like it raises kind of like a little level of mystery I guess I want to say and if right here it's like again you could even look at this for yourself even in the um, the sample because the sample is pretty generous you get us you get a setup of a few of the chapters to see if you will want to continue on this journey and yeah I, I would honestly say when the time comes probably when my nieces and nephews get a little bit older I'll probably give them these books to read because it's it's within the right kind of age group uh, and it has a content that's appropriate f for that age group like if you have parents that are definitely uh, concerned about what kind of content is in here and honestly if I was reading stuff like Goosebumps when I was in middle school and stuff then this is more than fine and honestly with what kids have to choose from nowadays we need more stuff like pennants to help you know pick up the slack in that department because I, I you know the, we we should try to at least get younger readers interested in this pastime because otherwise it'll just kind of fade and I don't want it to fade you know because books are definitely a different medium than visual comics or shows or animated TV series. 
And honestly, that has been kind of put to the wayside, especially even in radio shows. Like, I've been rediscovering all sorts of stuff that's just piqued my interest. So, that's another thing. We need to help YA. And not YA as we know it nowadays, where it's filled with a bunch of, well, women my age or older re trying to relive some sort of love triangle glory years. You know, because... Really, that does happen far too much. But overall, overall, I would say, hmm, I would say go with it. Definitely go with it. Pick up Miss Paula's stuff today. And if you want to see where it's from the outset, she has two characters that are destined to cross paths. And you won't even have to worry about that dreaded love triangle. Nah, no, no, it's it's a lot more wholesome, and it's like a breath of fresh air in a desert of endless, she's a special girl, kind of sets up. Have a good day, everybody.